got some questions you'd like to ask. One I was going to start with was, do you mind just maybe showing us this? And How it works? Yeah, or just like give us a bit of a bit more info about it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So this is the tablet that I was talking about. It's The brand name is Wacom, so W-A-C-O-M. I found this guy for 50 bucks at Aldi. I don't, <laughs> I don't think they even think it was one of their one-off things. You can buy super fancy ones because they're made for art. But if you're going to get one, you just need the most basic one you can find. So it does take a little bit of getting used to. You just plug it in and write on it. But because you're writing here and it's appearing on your screen, it takes a bit of getting used to. But I'll show you how it works. So I use it in a program called Sketchbook, which is free to download as well. It's another art program, but that's just plugged in and then you can write on it. And why that's what you do with the screen cast? Yeah, and then I just throw screencast over the top. You can import pictures into there, you can write, in, like, write text in there and everything else. So that's Sketchbook with the tablet over the top and then Screencast, automatic filming, whatever I'm doing. Any questions for Heather? That, that, sorry, so that's way on. Way on, yeah. That tablet, I'll be here tomorrow, I'll be today. You're welcome to borrow it whenever you want to play with it if you're interested. On the resources page in the video creation tools list, there's a link to the Wacom website where you can find those tablets. Heather, what would you do if you were starting your flips journey again? What would you do differently? Seek out people who knew what they were doing. <laughs> I kind of stumbled through the dark for when was when was flip on last year? Uh, October. 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 Yes. So from January to October, I was yeah stumbling through the dark trying to figure things out. I was very clumsy in the way I was doing things, so I had my videos on Google Drive and then them filling out a Google form afterwards and it was really awkward and clumsy in the way that was happening. And I was using Explain Everything, which can be amazing, but for maths equations, I couldn't fit everything on the screen, so that was really awkward as well. And I went to Flipcon and found so many other people that I could just bounce ideas off or say, I have this problem, help, and they had suggestions and things. So staying in contact with people who are flipping. Twitter is amazing for that. Jump on there, ask a question, and put flip class hashtag at the end of it, and somebody will answer you. Um, I don't know. One of the things I found, Heather, is um, I encourage my students to, when they're viewing videos, to take their notes, but also obviously write down the questions and bits they don't get, because of course there'll be bits that they don't get. And then at the start of the lesson, I want to go through that with the class, but they tend to struggle a bit to come out with those questions. So what I've been doing is like a, a very quick recap of the content at the start of the lesson just to jog their memory a bit. Do you do anything like, how do you go with? I don't. My year 11s and 12s, because they're doing flip mastery, they're all up to different places, yeah. stages, yeah, true. Areas. they're all coming in doing yeah. something completely yeah, different. So yeah. My year 10s are all over the shop as well because like doing ear flip, it's still very flexible. They get up, minimum they cover is the five one, sure. and then they cover the five two. So nobody's ever doing the same thing in the classroom. Yeah. In the classroom. yeah. yeah. Sorry, same question. Yeah. So the bottom camera and then the waveform, don't they kind of, are they kind of doing the same thing? The, the document camera. So the document camera, yeah. Yeah, so the waveform tablet looks like this, yeah. and the document camera is filming me writing on a piece of paper. So it's two different ways to do the same thing. The document camera, I do it for my intent because it's very structured. Yeah. If I'm feeling in the same worksheet they have in front of them. Right. And at, at this stage in the year, they need that structure. Yeah. Um, I use it for other things. You saw me have a calculator. Yeah. So things that you can't do yeah. like this, I use it for as well. I actually demonstrate which buttons to press on the calculator yeah. is awesome. Um, I use this for most things. But I'm also getting a whiteboard as of Wednesday because with it, I'm so excited. A whiteboard, like the glass oh. thing that Jeremy was talking about before, because that's going to be for maths equations that become massive. That's just going to be amazing. 
It was interesting that you said you keep just the document camera from sign. I did. They didn't know they had it. Our science teachers didn't have one, <laughs> but they made one using a retort stand <laughs> and an iPad. So they clamped the iPad facing straight. So you can make, and in Adelaide at our conference, we had another participant who realised she could do that. She grabbed her iPad and she put a stack of books and sat her iPad on top of it and instant document camera. So, or if you've got a friend who doesn't like holding your phone. <laughs> but really, you can just be inventive and you've got a document camera straight away. So. Yeah. Like yeah. Brendan's um, tripod there would be brilliant as a document camera. It works really well, actually. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing with the document camera is that some of my colleagues aren't comfortable with the tablet. They tried it, they had a go, they just couldn't get the hang of it. Whereas the document cameras, they're just writing on a piece of paper, they're comfortable with that. So for them, that's the sustainable method for making videos. Whereas for me, that's heaps easier because there's one document camera in the whole school and it's heavy and it's not very portable and everyone's trying to use yeah. it. That thing's mine. So I can go and hide in a store or a meeting room or I can do it at home. And it's mine and it's there and it's always available. So for me, that's the suspect, most sustainable way of doing it. Do all of your um, students have their own laptops? Yeah, I'm incredibly lucky at the school I'm at. We're at a one-to-one -one laptop school, so they all have Macs. Um, we also have time in the morning instead of roll call. We have a 40-minute session where it's like independent work time. So they have they do homework or compared assessments or we follow up behaviour concerns and stuff. But that means that if they don't have the internet at home, they have that time. That they can watch and I bet if they've got a choice of all their work they can do, I know what they're going to choose. A video yeah, rather than... That's right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I'm incredibly lucky with the hurdles that I didn't have to overcome and a lot of people do. One of the questions on the Padlet um, that I read, I re-read it before, was if everyone in the school in an ideal world is using flip learning, does that mean our students will be piled up with hours and hours of video content that they can't get through? But if you think about like we're trying to work on this 10 minute rule, you're keeping it short and sharp. And so you do have to think about how many, how much you require your students to do for homework. Um, but really, it's probably, I don't know, in your case, they're like, well, it's mastery, isn't it? So they don't have to do a particular thing. Yeah, they don't. My videos, I try and keep them under five minutes. Yeah. But some concepts go up to ten just because of the nature of yeah. whatever it is. But yeah, try and keep it under five minutes. For homework, they might only be minutes. watching like one or two. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. And by the time, if it's a five minute video, by the time they pause and take notes, everything else, it's maybe 15? Yeah. Maybe? So it's really not piling them up in mountains of work to do. No, no, no. All right, any final questions for Heather? Yeah. Oh, yeah. two. Heather <laughs> um, had a question here. She said that she has an Android tablet, Samsung one. Would that work as a Wacom tablet or not? Is that more like an iPad? Yeah, it's a Samsung tablet. It's got the touch screen? Yeah. Yeah, so you could actually just set up your screen recording instead of writing on a tablet, you're just writing straight on your screen. Sort of like you'd be writing on an iPad screen. Yeah, sort of thing. I think it's more like an iPad, but yeah, absolutely, I'm sure there's tools on there that like explain everything that you yeah. can use. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, I don't know if that would be something that's set up in the classroom, but so you get them to watch, do their plan activity, and then they come into class and do what they need to do. At the end of that lesson, do you then set them another thing to watch? Or is it at the end of every lesson? Last year I did. So when I was doing last year, as like like I said, the things where most teachers start off is that they have a video that they had to have watched before they came into this lesson. And we did an activity that was like, okay, you have this video to watch before next lesson. So that's what it was last year. But I still found that I wasn't quite where I wanted to be um, with all the benefits that come with flip mastery and things. So with my seniors, it's you have all this to do by this end date. So if they can watch it all in class and get it, or well, the exercise and things done in class, awesome. Most of them can't. Um, if they're organised enough, most of them have their videos watched at home so that they can do the activities in class when they need my help or need to be asking each other questions. But they do end up sometimes watching the videos in class as well, and that's fine. 
So it depends how you set it up. Well, thanks again, Heather, for being great and hearing from you. Really appreciate it.